600 miles out in the Atlantic lies a chain of islands known collectively as Bermuda. The islands are surrounded by coral reefs, and over the past three centuries, those reefs have claimed more than 300 ships, giving treasure hunters, historians, and marine archaeologists a rich and rewarding laboratory. We went to Bermuda to explore a 17th century ship that was being studied for the Philadelphia Museum. Experts had already been working on this so-called tankered wreck. Peter Copeland, artist and archaeologist. Teddy Tucker, whose ancestors were among the first settlers. Bo Bridges, actor and enthusiastic diver who had never seen a wreck underwater. And I, Peter Benchley, there to research a novel called The Deep. This was what you assume it looked like just after it went down then, Peter, right? Yeah, right. The early Bermuda ship salvagers stripped her of everything they could get off her. She rolled around up there on, in some storm or other and came to rest down at the bottom where you see her now. So well, if they got most of everything, what are you guys doing down here? <laughs> well, <clears throat> this wreck is particularly interesting. It's, it's quite old. It's been built in the first part of the 1600s. Where oh, they so you're it. after the history of it yeah. then, really? Yeah. We're doing then historical research on it. Diving on any wreck is an exciting experience, but diving on a wreck that's more than 300 years old takes on a special dimension. There is a sense of discovery, of history, and always the possibility of finding treasure. It had settled upright on the bottom in shallow water. It had probably been salvaged almost as soon as it sank. And for the past two years, Teddy and his team of divers had picked it pretty clean. But there seemed to be no end to the work of surveying the wreck cataloging the finds and, for Peter Copeland, the job of recreating the ship through his talent with a pencil. Peter Copeland's eye for detail makes him invaluable in underwater excavation, for his pencil picks out subtleties that photography often misses. Great oaken beams had to be moved so we could see what, if anything, was underneath them in the ship's hold. To do a proper job of studying this ship, every piece of it had to be measured precisely to learn the specifics of this shipbuilder's art. years old, how old? Uh, all together? Oh, anywhere from 1600, 1625, early 17th century. That's beautiful. I've never seen anything like that. This, was this a Spanish ship? Put it this way, when she was wrecked here, the Spanish and Portuguese were probably crewing it. But everything that points to it was built in a Scandinavian country. You found your treasure when, in 55 or 6? 55. I found the wreck in 51, Bob Canton and I. And we took a gun out of it couple of guns that you couldn't be seeing, and we never got around to it again until 1955. That's when we found the treasure. The Tucker treasure is one of the world's most famous. Teddy and his brother-in-law found gold bars, gold ingots, an emerald ring, and perhaps the single most valuable item of treasure ever recovered from the sea, an exquisite emerald-studded gold cross worth roughly a quarter of a million dollars. The airlift is Teddy's primary tool for excavating wrecks. He had first discovered his treasure wreck by fanning the bottom with a ping-pong paddle. But a ping-pong paddle is to an airlift what a tricycle is to a Boeing 747. The airlift scoops sand off the bottom with impressive speed and spews the waste out the back in a cloud of debris. We went back to the wreck, always hoping, but always knowing that we'd be fascinated by whatever we found. Bo probed among the timbers, 
and found a shard of majolica pottery, a piece of a plate off which Spanish sailors had taken their meals long before America was a nation. And like everything else found on the wreck, it was a piece of a puzzle. She had lain here for more than three centuries, untouched, concealing the relics of brave men's daily lives. We kept looking, reluctant to leave, until finally daylight ebbed and forced us to the surface. Thank you.